G'day, Ancient Mahar here. Uh, gee, the phone shut off just a second here. I'm going to respond to another comment on the channel. Uh, yeah, here it is. How about that? A uh, commenter asks on um, the last live stream I did, which was, what the time of recording this? Uh, October... I don't really know. Mm -hmm. It was, um, yeah, I don't know. Recent. <laughs> Anyways, um, the commenter says, not sure if this question relates to this video directly, but what does it mean when a person with borderline personality attempts to give a significant other authority over a part of the person with BPD's life, over the borderline's life? That the significant other should not really have input regarding. In a strange way, seeking permission, sorry, in a strange way, seeking permission from the significant other regarding types of clothes that they um, can wear or not wear, this seems like an attempt to transform the significant other into a parent. Oh, I would absolutely agree with that. It's very much about that, uh, unconsciously, for the person with BPD. And then the commenter said, if so, why and how does this dynamic work? Uh, I Okay, first of all, uh, the dynamic doesn't work. So why and how does it work? It doesn't work. Why? The why part is because people with BPD have arrested emotional development before or by the age of two therefore they do not have a self and most of the relating they do to a significant other more often than not especially when triggered and untreated when they're untreated and often when triggered is going to be really unconsciously unknowingly seeing you as what's known in object relations theory as object other parent representation in devaluation wounding parent in idealization good parent or parent never had so people with bp are very much in relationships with others because they're seeking identity and they don't have any ego boundary untreated they don't have any ego boundary between self and other so they do see you as a parent and so this person who's giving you all this authority is really um enacting uh or coming from a place of learned helplessness extreme immaturity inability to make decisions and extreme poor executive functioning which to various degrees and levels happens in uh bpd for people with bpd so it you said if so it, like the dynamic does not work it's like I've had so many clients tell me, you know, like I, like who have children right now, right? I already have kids. I don't need another one. So you really are more with, obviously not physically or in, in the adult arena, but otherwise you are very much with a child. Somebody who has not got emotional intelligence, not matured emotionally, doesn't know who they are. They're looking to you to make those decisions for them and and what clothes they wear or not wear, that's a really rather base decision. So that just shows the level of their inability to be able to recognize um, any personal responsibility whatsoever. And then the commenter said, I told the significant other that it could be an attempt to triangulate him in the future if he actually takes this stuff seriously. I don't know where that really fits in. Um, I don't know enough about the situation, but I don't think it's a setup or any really grand scheme of conscious manipulation. It's somebody who is with BPD, likely untreated and acting out the learned helplessness and seeing the significant other as mom or dad. Um, and then the commenter said, um, she can devalue him later using the strange compliance. Um, 
it's probably our uh, person BP probably already has devalued split to devaluation even with the compliance but the compliance as you so as you so call it compliance it's not like the person with BPD is consciously aware of this and it's all a manipulation to set them up and triangulate later no not, not at all it's sub it's subconscious to unconscious and it's a repetition compulsion in BPD where they relate to significant other as a parent object or as parent and they don't often see the significant other for who they really are and then you said the significant other thinks it's cute that she is complying with some of the general clothing standards and the comment says I disagree well I agree with you um, and disagree that it's cute it's not cute at all this is this person that you're talking about who's a significant other with somebody with BPD sounds very very codependent and isn't understanding that regardless of the fact that you might be <clears throat> excuse me ascribing more conscious motivation to the person with BPD than I would just based on what you've said uh yeah the significant other should not be thinking it's cute it's not cute it's the helplessness of people with BPD and their codependency and then the commenter said oh just asked for my thoughts well I just gave those didn't I so yeah it's um that can happen for people who are in a relationship with somebody with BPD any relationship type really but especially significant other and it can happen in a way that whether it's about clothes decisions on clothing or decisions in other areas of life as well it definitely can be um they really are relating to significant other as a parent um from an unconscious place it's not a setup of manipulation uh, because really I think that most people with BPD um, if they really understood what they were doing they would really want to get help to stop that because it comes out of abandonment wounds and shame wounds and woundedness and and the arrested emotional development so and it happens in many different ways for many different significant others as well so it's really important you know if you're with somebody with BPD and you see this learned helplessness and you feel like you're being a parent then you have to recognize that you have been put in that role and that people with BPD are seeking identity through you and then also in a repetition compulsion way that is unconscious to them they are re-experiencing when they're triggered or when they feel and when they feel helpless for example or can't make a decision that's often a trigger and then they don't always age regress but definitely they're experiencing something dissociatively from the past and the here and now as I'm often saying and so they know that the significant other you know is not their mom or dad like literally in objective reality but unconsciously that fragmented off from ego state of child uh, that loss of self there's a real neediness there people with BPD will manifest that neediness that lostness that lack of self in so many different ways but definitely if you're going through this if you can relate to this if you're the significant other somebody with BPD or you're even like not sure on and off and all the rest of the situations iterations people are in you might think it's okay to just do their taxes with them you might think it's okay to tell them yeah wear those pants wear that shirt don't wear this shirt making all those decisions for them like or you know like I've heard I've had a lot of clients say well you know we, we were going out to dinner couldn't even decide what restaurant to go to I said what restaurant do you want to go I don't know where do you want to go and then but but when you go when you pick a restaurant because they won't pick a restaurant because these are the decision people with BPD lots and especially in treat have problems all kinds of decisions and so they are in that way they're very much childlike and they are feeling totally helpless what and probably not aware of it and so they're just abdicating not only all responsibility as people with untreated BPD do in all kinds of ways 
but they don't even take, they, they can't make decisions or that's how they feel, or they never really learned how to make decisions. They have no sense of self, no self, no autonomy. And so often when they'll say, you know, if you're going out to a restaurant and, and you're saying, where do you want to go? What do you want to eat? They'll be like, where do you want to go? Or I don't know, or whatever the case. And then you, so you make a choice and you go. And then the next thing you know, like, and you go somewhere, maybe you've been a lot before if, if you're married or, you know, if you've been with the BPD person for a long time or even long enough to know what's their favorite kind of foods or where they eat most or what restaurants have they mentioned before or something like that. Point being, then you get in the restaurant and you get the menu and they're like, I don't like any of this food. What are we doing? I didn't want to come to this place. I wanted to go to whatever because I feel like Mexican or Italian tonight. I don't feel like what this restaurant serves. But they won't have made a decision in the first place. And then later they'll just be like a whiny little child. But I don't want this. I don't want anything here. Why would you bring me here? So again, not really forgetting, but taking no responsibility for the fact that they didn't make a choice. And so in summary here, I'd just like to say when people with BPD can't make a choice to don't know how to you know maybe can't feel the the learned helplessness or they are lacking emotional intelligence and emotional maturity they're very emotionally immature especially if untreated that this is um when they make these choices to have someone else make their choices they don't know they're making choices but not making a choice is a choice so for people with BPD who might not know this yet, or if they're untreated, but if you have BPD and you refuse to make a choice and you leave it to your partner or somebody else or your favorite person or whatever, uh, you're making a choice not to make a choice. You're making a choice not to take personal responsibility. And then often people with BPD will complain about that after somebody else makes a choice because they made the choice not to make a choice and they didn't take any personal responsibility. And don't forget that people with BPD are significantly, unless, unless significantly treated, but untreated, have an extremely negative lens. They're not walking around positive, happy people. They don't know who they are. They have lost themselves. So they're going to be negative about most things. And then when they abdicate, make the choice that they don't realize consciously to not choose, then when you whatever it is they might not agree with your pant selection or your shirt selection or the the restaurant you chose to go to because they wouldn't make a choice or what you're cooking for dinner um all of this stuff because people with bpd are highly negative most of the time until unless treated significantly treated or beyond and recovered so with that negativity too it's like that's another moving piece of why these relationships, especially with untreated people with BPD, present an impossibility. There will be no mutuality. There will be no reciprocity. There will be no accountability. And there is no personal responsibility taking, which leaves a significant other in the role of trying to be the significant other. Um, maybe loving and caring about the person and remember codependents out there your love isn't exactly the healthiest love either you need to learn more about that more about yourself get into healing recovery journey and the last thing i'll say is so many roles that a significant other could play but definitely the role of parent and it's not cute it's not funny person is abandoning themselves will they do that uh, if, if I don't have anybody with BP in my life now, <laughs> but if somebody were to ask me, you know, like constantly because they could have made a choice, uh, other than, Hey, does this look better than that or something? I'd be like, I don't know, go figure it out. So if you're talking to your friend, to the commenter, you might want to point out if, you know, they're open to hearing you, it's not cute and ask them if they know anything about codependency. So I hope that resonated with others as well. Um, people with BPD have tremendous learned helplessness, which some people with codependency have learned helplessness in some areas of life as well, because that can be go with the codependency with people with BPD, but it also speaks to the emotional rest of development for people with untreated BPD, specifically lack of emotional maturity, and they don't have a self, they don't know themselves, and they also have um, 
no reference for other. So this is why these relationships are so one-sided. And really, if you resonate with this, or if you've done things like this and made choices for somebody with BPD, or you might still be doing it, uh, bet you anything you're, it's not your favorite thing to do. Or are you one of those people with codependency that feels like, well, at least I'm needed, or I'm doing this, and, and, and you get a sense of self-worth and self-esteem from that. Because if that's the case too, hey, you deserve so much better. You need to take care of yourself. So if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please hit the, the, the picture of me. Oh, shoot. Over here, probably it will be. I don't know. And subscribe to the channel. Support the channel. Help the channel. It's still growing. Slowly it's chugging along. And take good care of yourself now.